in Frederick Douglass. Frederick Douglass Comprehension I. Question 1. What prevented the slaves from knowing their birthdays? Answer. He has not seen any authentic record containing it. Question 2. How would the master look at the inquiries about the slave's birthday? Answer. The large part of the slaves know as little of their 1941 ages as horses know of theirs, and it is the wish of most masters within my knowledge to keep their slaves thus ignorant. He did not remember to have ever met a slave thus ignorant. The white children could tell their ages. He was not allowed to make any inquiries of his master concerning it. He deemed all such inquiries on the part of a slave improper and impertinent and evidence of a restless spirit. Question 3. What was whispered about Douglas' parentage? Answer. He was admitted to be such by all he ever heard speak of my parentage. The opinion was also whispered that his master was his father, but of the correctness of this opinion. Question 4. When was Douglas separated from his mother? Answer. When he was an infant, he was separated from his mother. Question 5. Douglas' mother was able to meet him only at night. Question 6. What was the penalty to the field hand for not being in the field at Sunrise? Answer. Whipping is the penalty to the field hand for not being in the field at Sunrise. Question 7. How old was Douglas when he lost his mother? Answer. Douglas was seven years old when he lost his mother. Question 8. Name the person who was believed to be both Douglas' father and master. Answer. Anthony was the name of Douglas' father and master. Question 9. What was Mr. Plumer? Answer. Mr. Plumer was a miserable drunkard, a profane swearer, and a savage monster. Frederick Douglass Comprehension 2 Question 1 Why wasn't Douglas affected much by his mother's death? Answer He never saw his mother, to know her as such, more than four or five times in his life, and each of these times was very short in duration, and at night. He did not recollect of ever seeing his mother by the light of day. She was with him in the night. She would lie down with him and get him to sleep, but long before he woke she was gone. Very little communication ever took place between them. He received the tidings of her death with much the same emotions he should have probably felt at the death of a stranger. Frederick Douglass Comprehension 3 Question 1. What kind of hardships did the slave suffer at the hands of the slaveholder and his mistress? Answer. The slaveholder was a miserable drunkard, a profane swearer, and a savage monster. He always went armed with a cow skin and a heavy cudgel. The speaker had known him to cut and slash the woman's head so horribly that even master would be enraged at his cruelty and would threaten to whip him if he did not mind himself. He would at times seem to take great pleasure in whipping a slave. He had often been awakened at the dawn of day by the most heartrending shrieks of an own aunt of mine, whom he used to tie up to a joist and whip upon her naked back till she was literally covered with blood. No words, no tears, no prayers, from his gory victim, seemed to move his iron heart from its bloody purpose. The louder she screamed, the harder he whipped, and where the blood ran fastest, there he whipped longest. He would whip her to make her scream, and whip her to make her harsh, and not until overcome by fatigue, would he cease to swing the blood-clotted cow skin. Question 2. How does the passage comment on the dreadful experience of slavery? Answer. It is a miserable experience being a slave. The author was not seeing his mother very often even he never saw his mother, more than four or five times in his life. She lived about 12 miles from 12 miles from his home. She was hired by Mr. Stewart. She came to meet him very rarely, only in the night she made her travel to see him on foot. 
She was a field hand, and whipping is a penalty of not being in the field at sunrise, unless a slave has special permission from his or her master to the contrary. She seldom gets the permission. It is like a burning hell to live under slavery. Question three. In spite of the hardships he suffered as a slave, why does the author say slavery would not always be able to hold me within its foul embrace? Answer: Slavery would not always be able to hold me within its foul embrace. This is the living word of faith, and spirit of hope departed not from him, but he remained like ministering angels to cheer him through the gloom. This truly led him to go out of his slavery and be a model for all the slaves. He became the first one who was writing an autobiography on his own life. His faith had taken him a leader and a model for others. Through his power of words there were many changes taken place in the country. When he was in slavery he used to think of the future life. The burning desire had not quenched for long. He made it possible act. He often thought of the freedom of the slaves. Frederick Douglass additional question and answer Question 1 Where was Douglass born Answer Douglass was born in slavery as Frederick Augustus Washington Bailey near Easton in Talbot County Maryland Question 2 What is the exact year of his birth Answer It was 1817 or 1818 Question 3 Where did he learn to read and write with whose help? Answer: At Baltimore he learned to read and write with the assistance of his master's wife. Question 4. When did he escape from slavery? Where did he go? Answer: In 1838 he escaped from slavery and went to New York City. Question 5. Whom did he marry? Answer: He married Anna Marie, a free colored woman whom he had met in Baltimore. Question 6. What are the biographical works of Douglas? Answer: Narrative of the Life of Frederick, My Bondage and My Freedom and Life and Times of Frederick Douglas are the biographical works of Douglas. Question 7. What motivated him to get rid of slavery from his life? Answer: Slavery would not always be able to hold me within its foul embrace. This living word of faith and spirit of hope helped him to become a successful person. That is why he got freedom from the whites. Fill in the blanks. One, Douglas escaped in 1839 from the slavery. Two, he was born in Takahu near Hillsboro. 3 Douglas addressed in a convention of the Massachusetts Anti-Slavery Society in Nantucket in 1841. 4 Frederick Douglas died in 1895. 5 Douglas first master's name was Anthony. Frederick Douglas summary in English. Frederick Douglas is one of the most celebrated writers in the African American literary tradition. Narrative of the life of Frederick Douglas. An American Slave was published in 1845 and less than 7 years after Douglas escaped from slavery. Douglas story all begin with his birth and childhood, but each new version emphasizes the mutual influence and close correlation of Douglas life with key events in American history. Douglas begins his narrative with what he knows about his birth in Takahu, near Hillsboro. and about 12 miles from Easton in Talbot country Maryland he has no accurate knowledge of his age his mother was named Harriet Bailey she was the daughter of Isaac and Betsy Bailey both colored and quite dark his father was a white man Douglas notes that it was that his master was my father his mother and he were separated when he was but an infant he never saw my mother to know her as such more than four or five times in my life she was hired by a mr stewart who lived about 12 miles from my home she made her journeys to see him in the night traveling the whole distance on foot after the performance or her day's work he does not recollect of ever seeing my mother by the light of day 
She was with me in the night. She would lie down with him and get him to sleep, but long before he woke she was gone. Very little communication ever took place between us. His mother died when he was about 7 years old. He was not allowed to be present during her illness, at her death, or burial. The master is frequently compelled to sell this class of his slaves, out of deference to the feelings of his white wife, and cruel as the deed may strike anyone to be, for a man to sell his own children to human flesh mongers. He had two masters. His first master's name was Anthony. He was generally called Captain Anthony a title. He was not considered a rich slaveholder. He owned two or three farms and about 30 slaves. His farms and slaves were under the care of an overseer. The overseer's name was Pluma who was a miserable drunkard, a profane swearer, and a savage monster. Master was not a humane slaveholder. It required extraordinary barbarity on the part of an overseer to affect him. He was a cruel man, hardened by a long life of slaveholding. He would at times seem to take great pleasure in whipping a slave. From his earliest recollection, he dates the entertainment of a deep conviction that slavery would not always be able to hold him within its foul embrace. This good spirit was from God, and to him he offered thanksgiving and praise.